Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today together with my friends from allfreeknitting.com I'm bringing you this tutorial on how to hand paint yarn. To start off, we have a container with six cups of water to which I just added one and then I'm going to actually add a second tablespoon of white vinegar. In this water we are going to pre-soak the yarn so that way the acid source which is required to dye the yarn is present when we start painting the yarn with the food coloring. For the base we're using 100 grams of uh, Knit Pick Stroll Bear Yarn which is a wool nylon blend. And so this is just normal cold tap water with two tablespoons of white vinegar and I am sum gently submerging this yarn and I'm going to let it soak for about 30 minutes or so. While that's soaking, I'm going to take you through the other materials that we need for um, this tutorial. We'll need some small containers in which to mix our different dye colors. And of course we'll need some food coloring. I have here oops, some examples of the food coloring that we might be using today. Um, I really like McCormick's liquid dye, but any kind of liquid food coloring would work. In these vials, I have a, you know, a non-scientific stock solution of some different um, Wilton paste dyes. And the way that I make these solutions that I would then use to make, you know, mix my different colors is I take a toothpick with some of the paste and then add it to some water and mix it up. So see, here we have black, brown, and some purple. Uh, often I've said that rubber gloves are optional. Since we're dealing with non-toxic chemicals here, the gloves are still an optional component. But if you want to keep your hands color free, then I recommend that you wear some kind of glove during this process. Now, to, different people have different ways that they like to apply the dye to the yarn when they're painting it. You can do that by pouring your liquid directly on the skein and working it through with your hands. But sometimes I like to use um, syringes to apply. And you can find, uh, you know, you can use um, turkey syringes, different flavor syringes that you can find at your local kitchen store. You'll need some kind of micro -sa microwave safe plate. Um, today uh, we are going to be using our microwave as the heat source for this tutorial. And you're also going to need plastic wrap. Um, this is what we're going to wrap the yarn in while we heat it. Now, you also may need to protect your work surface. I'm going to be working on this granite countertop, so I'm not worried about color getting into it. But if you're working on a wood surface, then sometimes I'll cover it with a plastic bag and paper towels to catch additional spills so that way I don't accidentally stain my work surface. I am ready to start mixing up my dyes. Um, to each of these glasses here, I have added uh, one eighth of a cup of water. I have two syringes from when I'm adding dyes from my paste stocks, and I have an extra cup of water back here for cleaning the syringe off. So I think that the colors that I'm going to want to use in my yarn today are going to be black, brown, purple, blue, and green. Now the brown is not going to be a prominent color, but I am going to want to keep make the colors a little less bright, so adding brown can help with that. So I'm going to start by making um, some colors. I'm going to add 10 drops. I didn't lose count of green to one glass. Five to the second. And none to the third. Then with the blue, I'm going to do 10 drops. Okay. 
here and five drops in the middle. There. And so with I like to use a little fork to mix the colors and just so you can get a sense of where we're at right now. We've got some blue. More of a teal. And a green. This is why I like working on a paper towel because you can really use this to keep track of your colors. Now these colors are a little bright, so I've got a stock solution here of some brown that was uh, a Wilton's paste diluted into water. And I'm not sure really how much water um, to dye ratio there is, but I'm going to add, so this is all done with just experimentation. Where is my marking? There it is. So I'm going to add about a mil, a milliliter of brown, you know, very approximate to each of these glasses. And we can see how that changes the color. Syringe in the cup water, and then with my fork, you can see now that the blue, you've got a deeper, somewhat less bright color. And so you can play a lot um, with the way that you mix your colors. And I am going to mix some colors in my other three cups in a similar fashion. And then when I come back, we'll be ready to start painting our yarn. I have finished mixing my dyes, and I just want to give you a sense of my finished colors um, by using this fork dipping technique. Doing this on a paper towel um, by your work surface is a great way to help you keep track of your different colors so that way, when you start adding them to the yarn, you know which ones they are. Because as you can see, I've, um, oops, I guess this was my, and the colors will spread on the paper towel. Um, but so this can help you decide how you want to order them. All right, now I need to set up my workspace. So I have a large region of my countertop cleared right here. And have the camera settled and using just standard kitchen classic wrap I'm going to arrange it on the counter to try to create sort of an oval because once the yarn is laid on we're going to try to wrap the plastic wrap around it and so it doesn't really matter if it sticks to itself too much um, I just want to keep the ends Clear. Get another piece. And put the second piece down. And so, you know, here's the middle, but it doesn't the middle doesn't need to be covered because that's where um, the yarn is gonna go. And for good measure, uh, I'm gonna add tiny little pieces over each end. We may need more uh, plastic wrap when it comes time to finally wrap the yarn, but for now this should be sufficient. Um, this should be sufficient for the painting. So now to come over to where our yarn has been soaking, um, there's a lot of water here and we don't want this much water. So I'm going to pour, I'm holding it with the yarn with my hands, the yarn doesn't go in this thing. I'm going to pour the water out and gently very gently squeeze out the excess water because don't forget that we will be adding more liquid as we're painting. So there is still, you know, the yarn is still quite wet. Um, 
And now, turn back over here, we want to get it so this skein is tied off somewhere. I want to find that. There we go. All right. So now we have our pretty skein, and we're going to just lay it on the plastic wrap in a neat oval. So you can see that there is saran wrap on all sides of the yarn and you want the skein to be as neat as possible because theoretically you want your color repeats to be fairly regular. Um, you know, of course it's possible you don't want your color repeats regular, in which case then you are fine. And now comes the fun part. There is really no science to how you add your yarns. Um, I'm, let's see, I'm going to bring my dies over. So I've got black, and then I've got purple, can you see? Yeah. blue, a different blue, teal, and green. So let's see, I will start by adding the green. So I've got um, just a five mil little syringe here, and I'm not really caring about the volume that I add, but I am using this just as a handy way to add the dye. And so how you paint the yarn and in what big sections is completely up to you. So you see I've added the dye here. Now you can choose to have a lot of white and make a speckled yarn, or after you've added yarn to a section, you can gently press on it to expand where the dye is. And Oh, that's cool. You can see the browns. But you want to make sure that you don't have any white sections on the inside. So we're going to be needing to add um, more dye to the section. Now part of the reason why I have arranged my dies. There we go. And you can see the die kind of squirting out the sides a bit. Um, that just means that, you know, it's working. But I still have a fair amount of white down there. So we're going to need to really press to expand the die. All right. Um, at the end, we'll check the white spots. I also like to keep. Um, some paper towels handy, so that way I can wipe off my hands uh, in between pressings. And I guess I'll move my wastewater to the center. And I use this to rinse, just rinse off my syringe. Alright, so then my next color is this blue, or I guess teal. I'm keeping the sections pretty big at this point because I'm not sure how much I'm going to want to extend them. But so I'm really just starting off adding the colors broadly so that way I have a sense of where I want each color to be. There's the blue. I've got my purple. And I've got black. Black is an interesting color to work with because you can actually get it. There is no real black dye. The black dye is just composed of a bunch of different colors. And so there's something that people like to do sometimes called breaking black, where you get it to split into its different colors. And so while that isn't our goal today, it is possible that it could happen. Okay. And since I don't want any white spaces, um, I will be going through and adding more dye to each of those spots, but I'm also going to, in each of my sections, you know, massage the dye, and the 
the last thing I will do will add, be adding dye to the white spots in between because I'll be working the color, um, you know, working the color so that there is some pretty overlap. I've added all of my dyes to each of the sections and I'm now going to start working them, you know, just kind of slowly massaging the dyes to cover the white areas on either side. So you can see here, did the, the black. And you know, you may need to add and use more dye. I mean, maybe next time I do this, I'll use, start off with a volume slightly greater than a quarter cup. Or I can also add, you know, more dye. Whoops. There's a white section that I need to fix. Slowly move the black. So you see how this white section is now gone. And we'll do the same thing over here because you can get some like fun mixes of colors. I've done, you know, my gradient is a little slower in color changes. And it's okay if there's still some pale colors because that may be what you want. But then you can slowly massage all the way around. All of the dye has been added to the yarn. Um, you know, if you've got too many white spots, as I said, you know, I mixed a little extra dye um, because I wanted to spread it, it to spread a bit further. Um, and with my paper towel, before I fold it up, I'm going through and just pat, like patting up um, excess liquid around the sides just to keep things clean. Um, all right, now we're ready to wrap this up. And so, you know, it's there's no like exact science here, but you want, I guess, but I, I guess starting at the outside, wrapping, saran wrap around, working in. You know, if you want, you can add just add extra saran wrap over it to begin with. I'm just gonna kind of roll it in. We want the colors kind of stay separate because we don't want to lose all of our beautiful hand painting work. So now, you know, I've rolled it up. And this is where the microwave safe plate comes in. So we're carefully, see, we're carefully going to transfer this onto the microwave safe plate. And you'll see some dye did get on the plate. We want, we really want this to be as covered as possible because we don't want a lot of the moisture um, to escape while we are microwaving, but some will inevitably escape. So now we have our wrap skein on our microwave safe plate. Now to the microwave. So of course you don't want to burn or scorch your yarn. So I microwave in two minute stints. Um, I will let it uh, cook for two minutes and then we'll stop and see where it is. But you want to get it so that the yarn is steaming. Um, and so then once, whenever the yarn starts steaming, I then let it sit and cool off for a bit before repeating the process. I finished four minutes and while the yarn is not hissing and steaming, oops, it is hot to touch. So I'm going to let it cool down until I can handle comfortably and then I'm going to repeat this process one more time. All right, our beautiful skein is now cool to the touch so we are ready to unwrap and then wash it. I may have mentioned previously but in uh, when you're hand painting yarn, you're much more likely to have excess color um, and so more color to rinse out than you are in a lot of the submersion dyeing techniques that um, we've done in, in my tutorials. Alright, so now we've got the skein. So pretty, free of the plastic wrap. We are going to come over here and rinse this. And warm water. 
Oh, do I wear gloves? My hands are nice and powerful. And you can, already, you can kind of see that there's a little color, but we heated it long enough that most of the color is, in fact, remaining in the yarn. But this isn't as clear. Huh. So that's good. That means we heated it for long enough. Um, I'm going to add some mild dish soap. Oops. Not quite that much. But I'm going to add some soap to the water because we want to help to try to remove all, there we go, there's some color. Um, hard to see just the studs, but you see that the, the color running off um, from the addition of soap. And we don't, because you don't want any of the uh, dye to end up on clothes or ruining anything else. So this is why it, it is very important to always wash your yarn after you're done dyeing. And once, and you keep washing until the water runs clear and no more dye comes out of the yarn. So there we have it. We have a beautiful skein, I'll open it up, of hand-painted yarn. You can achieve different results and get more um, consistent tones throughout if you use a little bit more water in your dye or if you don't squeeze out quite so much water when you start painting. But there are many ways that you can vary your results. Um, you just have to play with it and have fun. Think of it like finger painting. You know, you never know what you're going to get, but you will ultimately create something that is really beautiful. Um, even if it ends up brown, because you can get a very beautiful brown. Anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching this tutorial brought to you by allfreeknitting.com on how to hand paint your yarn.